Welcome back. So as the title of this video suggested, what I want to talk about today is something that happened to me last weekend, and that was playing a just a phenomenal record on a phenomenal system. I'm not talking about my own system. <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually tell this in, in sort of two parts because they're almost like two separate stories. One is, um, one is what, what is the record? What's the story behind that? And then the second is, how did I come about uh, being able to play it on this system? And what did that system entail? And what was the listening experience like? Uh, so hopefully this is going to be interesting. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so let me let me just dive right into it. How about that? So the record in question here, and I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to do like a series of cutaways as well, because it's really difficult for me to show you this in any type of detail, especially because I want to be so careful with it. Um, so I'm going to show you some cutaways or maybe, you know, maybe some some small, uh, you know, pictures up here just to give you a better sense of what this is. Also provide some links in the uh, in the description in case you want to uh, look into this a little bit further. But the record that we're talking about is uh, John Coltrane's A Love Supreme, and more specifically, the Super Sense master cut of John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. So this may not be um, familiar to you, and here I'm going to put this down because again, I, I do want to be uh, I do want to be careful with it. Um, this may not be familiar uh, to you, so let me give you a little bit of context. Um, a Love Supreme is the third release out of four so far in the Super Sense Master Cut series. Um, so Super Sense is providing direct cut lacquer discs, and they're calling it Master Cut because every copy is the original Master Cut, cut directly onto a lacquer disc. Um, they've only put out these four so far um, in what they're calling sort of their archival tape series. Then they also have a live recording series as well. The live recording series only has a Gregory Porter uh, title out so far. Um, and the archival tape series started with some classical stuff. There's like a 1960 recording by an artist named uh, Martha Argerich, I believe, um, in a quantity of just 100 copies. Then they had one by Carlos Kleiber uh, from, I think, 1975, also 100 copies. Number three was A Love Supreme. And what they did with this one is they put it out in 100 copies for sort of the general audience, um, as far as I could tell. And then they put out a uh, edition of like 500 of them uh, targeting the US audience. Um, and so then let's see, number four, there they did, what did they do? Um, they did Getz Gilberto. So Getz Gilberto, same thing, uh, 100 for the international audience, 500 for domestic, um, and all of these have sold out, okay? And this is despite the fact that the retail price on these is 444 euros, or around about 480 to $500, depending on when it came out and what the exchange rate was. So they have announced their fifth, sixth, and seventh editions, um, which include a classical title by William Steinberg. They also have uh, Nina Simone's I Put a Spell on You, and then the, uh, the last one is uh, Ella and Lewis, uh, which was just recently put out by Analog Productions. Um, so again, 444 euros each. Um, and I'm not, uh, this is not meant to be a commercial. Uh, there was a lot of controversy when Mastercut, or excuse me, Supersense, uh, decided to, uh, to release these Mastercuts. And um, part of it is based on the price, uh, because 480 bucks is a lot for a new record, uh, although not without precedent, right? We also have the Electric Recording Company who's charging around about the same uh, for their editions as well, and those aren't even uh, those aren't even lacquers. So, uh, but but the other reason why um, why yeah why why the controversy is is because it's a lacquer. It's made with acetate lacquer, uh, so these are inherently more fragile. And uh, the expectation is that they degrade with each play. Now, you could say that a vinyl record does, and that's true, um, but significantly more so because I guess the lacquer material is supposed to be softer. Um, so these are indeed metal core discs with lacquer covering them. Um, and you can check out on the SuperSense website. Uh, but basically, um, they, they, they kind of tried to address this idea of degradation. And I know that there's been a lot of folks, including in the YouTube community, um, who have been sort of speculating, I think, about how long these discs will last. And I think part of that is based on the idea that um, if you've been around records for a while, you've probably come across an acetate at some point in your digging. Um, and oftentimes, these things are absolutely trashed. And given the equipment back in the day, 
it, it was easy to see why they'd be trashed because they're so fragile and because equipment was uh, was not very forgiving. Uh, and so the, the open question is that I can't answer, by the way, because I'm not the expert. I don't even really know enough about the process in, in how these were made. That's just not my expertise. Um, but the, the argument these days is that, is that um, equipment is a little bit more sensitive and, is, and it's not going to wear these records out as nearly as fast as some have suggested. So if you go to the SuperSense website, you can actually see um, they, they posted a, a link to a blog where what someone did is they, they played one of these acetate, excuse me, one of these lacquers a hundred times. They used a technique called spectral analysis, which I don't know enough about. Um, but the long and short of it is that after a hundred playbacks, there was no discernible degradation. Um, now there was variance in, in terms of uh, how, I don't know what the, uh, you know, what the lines on the graph did uh, between plays, but it wasn't that universally it was degrading um, with, uh, with each play and that was across a hundred plays. They didn't do it beyond that. Um, so one other piece of controversy with this title is that um, the master tape has been damaged, which results in one of the channels going in and out for the first few minutes on side two and that was transferred to the disc as well. So the idea is that they wanted to represent the master tape as best as they could, rather than artificially fix it, which honestly I don't think that they could do given their process. Um, and they really want to preserve this process of everything that's on the master tape is exactly what you get. Um, they kind of call it this like one-to-one, -one. like there's no, there's no digital step, there's no like, there's no, not doing anything to it. It's, it's basically you're getting um, as, as close as you can get to the original master tape as possible in the form of this lacquer. Okay, so that's a little bit about uh, the process. Um, and what I'd like to do now is talk to you about um, what's included with, uh, with one of these 444 euro uh, SuperSense Master Cut editions. All right, so let me show you um, a little bit closer what you actually get with this thing. I'm um, I don't want to make this just be like you know sort of an unboxing porn kind of <laughs> kind of video, but I wanted to give you a sense, I guess, of what these uh, what these what these come with, um, just to give you a better idea. And and again, I'm going to use some cutaways just to give you a much better idea. Um, and uh, and I'm going to talk you through it, I guess, as I as I kind of uh, go through this. Um, so first of all, the the thing that I would say about this um, this this particular um, well, this packaging is that there's elements of it that I really, really like um, in terms of like I don't know the uh, the sort of the material that the box is made of, and it's kind of textured and it uh, and it feels nice. But at the same time, it is shockingly flimsy. Um, so I I would have expected this to be like I don't know maybe even borderline plexiglass. But as you can see here, um, the first thing that happens when you open it is you it reveals the disc and it's not even in it's not even enclosed in any type of like bag or sleeve. Um, it it's got this this branded kind of lock on it. So you're supposed to uh, kind of undo this and you you'll you'll see that there's the um, You'll see that there's the uh, the you know the spindle hole, um, and take out the record and put it on your uh, player. But but the problem is is that you have you have this cardboard that kind of then touches the the disc um, unless you're I don't know like being just extremely careful with this. And obviously I'm going to be extremely careful with it. But still it's like it's just kind of a shame that that's what they did. I feel like like I said I feel like given the price this thing should be in like plexiglass or something. Um, so anyway, uh, there's no label on the disc, um, which is uh, which is fine. They're kind of going for the um, you know the, the, again this this sort of lacquer idea, um, and you know they, they do have um, sort of a nice um, indicator of exactly who I guess worked on it. Um, you have the cutting engineers who have made their mark. You have the date that it was uh, that it was done, and and generally speaking, the packaging is quite nice. It's just again I, I kind of wish that um, that there was better protection for the actual um, for the actual disc. Uh, which isn't that the most important thing here? Um, so there, there is um, kind of this uh, this like OB thing that came with it as well. That uh, seems like it was done uh, nice as well. Um, and then there's a booklet. And to be honest, I wish this booklet was bound. I wish that it wasn't um, that the, each of the uh, sort of the pieces of ephemera were not in these like wax paper kind of sleeves because then it would be a lot easier to um, to kind of go through everything. Um, 
But so so what you have is you know almost what looks like a photocopy, right, of uh, of some original um, some original sheet music. Um, you also have let's see, um, you know you've you've got these these kind of uh, nice sort of um, you know photos and and um, you know this kind of this element of like originality I suppose is what they're kind of going for even though these are obviously reproduced they're trying to um, you know make it seem like you're, you're getting something that is a little bit closer to uh, museum quality I suppose and and it is nice and it is fun it's just that I, I feel like I could um, I could go through this if it was just printed you know nicely on like glossy paper and I'd probably get an even better experience um, than you know than than having it be inside these um yeah like i said these these like wax paper sleeves um you also have a um sort of a letter that, that warns you about those th a couple of minutes of tape degradation uh, that you're going to uh, that you're going to experience as you listen to the first side of or excuse me the first few minutes of side b um you know so yeah, there's, there's just um there is a lot here i would say but it is just really cumbersome to go through um and and to ensure that you're kind of treating um, all of the, the material nicely. Um, but, you know, like I said, I mean, it, it kind of is what it is. I, I guess they expect everybody to be extremely careful, and, and certainly I try to be. Um, but again, that's just kind of my, uh, my opinion that, um, you know, they're, they're really going for the uniqueness of this, but, but at the same time, it's also mass produced. So why not just make it something that's actually going to last a little bit longer um, and, and with a little bit, uh, a little bit better protection? Um, so, you know, I, I mean, not that it's, it's my job to really like review, um, the sort of the packaging on this. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really the target market for this thing. Um, don't know exactly what came over me when I decided to pick it up. Um, one other point perhaps worth noting is that I did spring for number 10, uh, because you got to choose if you were going to go for, um, you know, one to 10 and you were early enough, then you could be able to choose, uh, which number um, that you got and then I think I think anything above 10 I want to say was just random and it was based on you know how soon you uh, you ordered um, so anyway got number 10 suppose it's kind of cool I'm sure it sounds just the same as number you know 499 right um, but that's uh, it is what it is all right so um, so that is this um, this you know, box, I'll call it a box set, I suppose, but, um, you know, just, just one disc. Um, and now what I'd like to do is kind of move into, um, what it, what does it sound like? And, and it, what, what, what was my experience like over this past weekend when I was able to play this record again on such a phenomenal system? All right, so how this came about is I have a friend who works at a local hi-fi shop here in Atlanta, and the shop is called Hi-Fi Buys. Uh, they have a pretty good rep reputation, um, at least I think in the region anyway, perhaps outside the region, I'm not exactly sure. I have sort of only um, you know gotten into this hobby, at least mostly since I've been living down here, so I, it's not like I had heard of them otherwise um, unless I was uh, here in Atlanta. But um, fantastic shop. Uh, the guy who runs it is a really nice guy. And I guess at some point, my buddy who works there mentioned to him that I had this particular John Coltrane release. It came out in 2021. And um, I got to be honest, I have not listened to it in its entirety because I was waiting to make sure that I had a system or like a cartridge that wasn't going to that wasn't going to ruin it. Um, so I did listen to, uh, I think, most of side one, and I kind of left it at that and thought, I probably should sell this at some point. Like, I didn't buy it to flip it, but I just figured that, uh, it, it, I don't know, it was a little bit beyond me. Like, I didn't have the right setup to to truly appreciate this, this record. I actually did do a shootout with it um, before I started this YouTube channel and compared it to the, um, the Acoustic Sound series uh, edition and as, as well as the original. And I remember um, saying easily that the SuperSense was uh, was uh, superior to both of those, but but you know perhaps you know I'm sure not not worth the price, right? Like I think the best um, sort of uh, bang for your buck is going to be that Acoustic Sound series uh, edition. So anyway, um, again, my buddy mentioned that I had this record, and the owner said he'd love to hear it, and apparently um, some of the other people in the uh, the shop said they would love to hear it as well. And um, and how this shop is organized, and I'm going to show you some pictures. They have a variety of listening rooms, and in each of these listening rooms is the opportunity to demo very high-end setups. And it kind of ranges 
Uh, I, I'm actually not sure what their what their thought process is in terms of how they organize uh, certain equipment together in certain rooms, but I want to say they have like three or four dedicated listening rooms, and then they also have the ability to basically for you to audition any equipment that you want. So if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna buy some equipment from them and you want to figure out, hey, what does this sound like? What does this sound like? I think they'll hook it up for you in one of their rooms and allow you to hear it. So certainly a, a high-end audio shop. And like I said, uh, very nice guys. I've gotten my, what have I purchased there? I got my Kef KC62 subwoofer from them. I bought my VPI uh, record cleaning machine from them as well. I got my Kef LS50 speakers from them. And here's the thing, each of those things that I just mentioned are like way at the bottom end of anything that they even like sell, right? <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a high roller whatsoever compared to, their, um, compared to their normal clientele, I'm quite sure. So uh, anyway, what they what we had the opportunity to do was go into what I believe was their highest end room setup, and it was um, extremely it's extremely impressive. At the same time, when I look around the room, I have no idea what anything is because I'm just I'm not in really in this space. So I kind of had to ask questions and I took some pictures, which I'm showing you, and um, and and I'm going to attempt to kind of represent everything that's there, even though I don't have all the details. So let me um, let me just start out, um, I guess, with um, with uh, the, the turntable. So the, the turntable, I believe, is a Brinkman Taurus, uh, I believe. And um, let's see, what, what else do we have here? We have DS Audio Grandmaster Dual Chassis Phono Stages. Um, there's a uh, Dan uh, D'Agostino Momentum HD preamplifier. There's a Dan D'Agostino D'Agostino, I don't know. Momentum S250 MXV stereo amplifier, and there are two of them. Um, there's a Dan D'Agostino Momentum M400 MXV monoblock amplifier, because of course you need a, a separate amplifier for your mono stuff versus your stereo. Um, the, the, uh, let's see, they have a DCS Vivaldi DAC. They have a DCS Vivaldi CD transport. I don't even know what a CD transport is. Um, the, uh, the speakers are Wilson Audio. I'm not sure exactly on the model. I don't know what the subwoofer is in this room. The stylus in here is, um, all, all I know is that it's something like seven or $8,000, but I don't remember exactly what that was. But if you're tracking with me and you're thinking about some of those brands, maybe those brands mean something to you. Again, I'm, um, I'm still a newbie in the world of equipment but I did a little bit of research. It turns out that turntable is a $16,000 turntable. The phono stages, dual chassis phono stage is $45,000. The preamp is $40,000. The stereo amplifiers are $45,000 each. The monoblock amplifier is $40,000. The DAC is $36,000. The CD transport, again, that I don't know what it does, $42,000. The, audio, the uh, speakers, I believe, are $60,000 for the pair. Um, stylus, uh, I think I already mentioned, um, yeah, seven or 8,000. Don't know what the subwoofer is, so can't even, um, can't even guess. But the total here, um, if you've been following, is somewhere around $386,000, and that doesn't include subwoofer, cables, room treatments. I believe that there are other upgrades that they've done, perhaps the tone arm, perhaps to some of the equipment. Um, but basically, what I was um, you know, kind of informed is that this setup is around a half million dollars. So there isn't a single piece of equipment in that room that I could justify or afford, right? So um, anyway, the, the point here is what a fantastic opportunity <laughs> to play one of my records on such a great setup. And, um, and it was nice that, uh, that, that uh, the folks at uh, Hi5 Buys were so interested in hearing it as well. So we queued this record up and, um, and well, that's, that's uh, yeah, what I, what I wanna talk about next. All right, so in short, what was it like playing this record on this setup? Um, it, was, it was absolutely amazing, it, it really was. Now, keep in mind that I'm, I have the sort of mentality that um, you don't need to spend a lot of money to enjoy records, and I, and I really think that that's the case. I know that there are people who, um, who really wanna get that extra couple of percent on their um, like uh, e eking up in terms of like having that perfect sonic experience. And, and I guess what I mean by that is that, I think I've said this in a previous video, but if you think about a Crosley integrated turntable speaker unit, 
um, you you might be able to get this is not scientific, right? But like 75 or 80 percent of the utility of a record by playing it on a less than hundred dollar integrated Crosley unit. Um, and if if you spend a little bit more money and you have a setup like let's say what's in this room, um, and I've and I've uh, covered this in a previous video, and I'll link I'll, I'll link it um, so or uh, put the link in the uh, description uh, for those uh, for those folks who want to get a refresher on on my setup. But again, you know, fifteen hundred dollars speakers they're 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 not um, sixty thousand dollars speakers, right? Or my Mac um, amplifier is you know maybe a fifteen hundred dollar amplifier, not a forty five thousand dollar amplifier, let alone two of them, unless you count the monoblock, so three. Um, and and here's the thing: I think with my setup, I can probably get, again, not scientific, but like I don't know what ninety five percent of the utility of a record, and and so what people chase. And you could you could uh, disagree and say not 95 with this setup, you know. But whatever, what what people chase is those increments. Um, they want to get uh, as as best of a sonic experience as they can, and they want to hear the music as best as it can possibly be heard at home. And um, and that's not that's not something that I've ever really chased. But it's very interesting to be able to hear <laughs> this record presumably the best that it could possibly be heard. And I know that there's I know that there's better setups, but again, this is like in my in my criteria or from what I've heard, this is like the best that I, that I could possibly hear it. So, um, it was it was amazing and the detail was amazing and there was there was moments where I wanted to just kind of like close my eyes and feel like I was in the room um, as the uh, as a love supreme was being recorded and it really felt like that you were almost there. Um, because it, it just felt so dynamic, and the stereo uh, soundstage was was beautiful, um, and and there was you know I found myself paying attention to individual uh, individual musicians at different points and and trying to like really listen carefully for some of the detail and how they were playing, and it was there. Um, it was just such a such a rewarding experience to be able to hear uh, such a fantastic album and something that I have uh, really enjoyed and, and loved over the uh, over the years in this type of uh, in this type of situation and it was nice they kind of left me alone for I would say a good uh, half or maybe three quarters of um, of the record and they let me listen to the whole thing so I was taking up their precious uh, their precious room so that uh, customers couldn't go in there I guess although they actually did allow one customer to go in uh, while while I was listening to it and and hear it as well and um, so anyway um, you know, this has been a lot of build up to what does it sound like, and it's just it's really difficult because I can't um, I can't play a video of it here for you because uh, because YouTube would take my video down um, because of the copyrighted material, right? But here's the thing: me recording it on my cell phone, like you're not gonna get you're not gonna get the same experience. I might as well be recording it on my turntable here. You'd probably hear just about the same thing, right? Um, so you wouldn't necessarily get that. But I do kind of wish that that I could um, that I could provide a uh, you know a video of, of that and and have you hear how it sounded um, in the room. So I don't know. I mean, this experience was was interesting to me. It definitely shows me the value in upgrading equipment. But at the same time, like, how much money do you need to spend before you're going to actually be able to you know perceive some of these incremental differences and really get that experience? Well, in this case, we know it's a half million dollars, right? But might I be able to move from that 95 up to a 96, right, or a 97? And what's that worth to me? And unfortunately, these these extra percentages, again, not scientific, just become extremely expensive. You know, like so, if it's a hundred dollars up to 80 percent, and it's a couple thousand dollars up to 95, 96 might be fifty thousand dollars. 97 might be a hundred thousand dollars, right? Um, and so, you know, I I, I don't think that those are um, improvements that I'm necessarily going to chase. And yet, I have this SuperSense MasterCut edition that you could argue I, I shouldn't be playing on my setup here, right? Um, and and you know, and I also have the acoustic sounds uh, version that I that I play much more regularly. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I've learned here, other than that I, I certainly had a just an amazing time uh, being able to hear this. And I think next time I want to bring I want to try to bring some uh, some other stuff and uh, and see if they have interest in, in it as well, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know what the, the learning is here for me. I don't know, should I be keeping this master cut and only bringing it out in similar cir circumstances where I want to hear it on somebody else's setup 
or maybe I'll, I'll keep it so that as I bring in, you know, and swap out equipment, I play it so that I can feel like, you know, it's a sort of a celebratory thing. I, I am somewhat conscious of this idea that the, uh, that the lacquer will degrade over time, but at the same time, here we are, it's, you know, I bought it in 2021. It's about a year and a few months after I bought it, and I've only played it one and a half times. So maybe I don't have to worry about it degrading, but also maybe I should note it. So um, that's where, I think that's where we stand. I'm, um, I'm kind of curious with some of the folks out there what they think about this idea of these lacquers um, and, uh, and, and what uh, SuperSense is doing. I'm curious if anybody out there has a copy as well. And I wanna hear about what system you played it on and what you think about it. Because like I said, I know that it's better than acoustic sounds and I know that it's better than the original, um, even on my setup. But just this idea that there's so much more potential in this disc is, um, is really exciting. And you know, it, it sure would have been nice to bring the acoustic sounds edition as well and do all the play testing, but listen, I can't monopolize their time for several hours. So I was just happy to get that experience that I did. So anyway, that's it. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. As always, please hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.